Hi, I'm Linda from Barlati's Body Blitz. Today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. I'm actually asking for my viewers' help with the Australian bushfire crisis. So if you watch the news, I'm sure you would have heard about what's going on, especially on the east coast of Australia. Lucky Minnie and I are on the west coast, so we're not directly affected by the bushfire crisis. But because we are one large continent, we definitely will be affected in the long run. This bushfire crisis is the worst it has ever been historically in Australia and I would say even in the world. It is out of proportion compared to say the wildfires that happen in California, even the Amazonian bushfires. It is just astronomical how much is being burnt and it is still raging. It's been raging for months and months. This is something I've kind of been putting off because I'm very, very sensitive to anything that involves animals and I didn't really even want to look into it, to be honest. I've been reading headlines of what's going on to inform myself, but when it comes to details and watching videos of animals being hurt and, and dying, um, I just find it really confronting. So I'm not really going to talk about that side of things so much. Of course, human lives are very, very uh, precious as well. And thank God only 28 lives have been lost. And I mean, that sounds um, terrible because 28 lives are still 28 lives and all of the families surrounding that and all of the hurting people um, that will be affected by that. But um, in proportion to the fact that uh, over a billion animals have been lost, um, that is actually a very, very good outcome and that is all due to the amazing firefighters and unfortunately it's five firefighters that lost their lives out of those 28 people and they're the most heroic, most amazing people, um, so many volunteers as well. So basically I just wanted to appeal to you to have a look at some of the images and videos that I'm going to put at the end of this video, just so you can see kind of the scale of it. I don't want to go into too much detail about anything, but the fact is that it's not just the now, it's not just what's happening right now, that properties are being lost. And here's just a few statistics. So this is from the 14th of January. So as I said, 28 died, including five firefighters. More than 17.1 million hectares has been burnt. Um, that is just huge. It's absolutely massive. And the fires are so ferocious because there hasn't been a lot of back burning, which means that a lot of the foliage is quite old. And um, for example, if you burn foliage that's half a year or one year old compared to foliage that's four years old, the fires are 17 times hotter because of the density of the foliage and all of the oils and things that are present. So literally, the inferno that this creates kills not only everything in sight, all the animals, all the vegetation, it even chars many, many of the trees that are not stable enough so they can't even survive after the fact. And it also kills the top portion of the soil, which means that all of those microbes that are needed to create new life are not going to be present. So in order to then plant new vegetation on that depleted soil, it's going to take years and years and years for anything to come through. So there are so many bigger aspects to what's actually going on with these fires because of the heat. You know, it's like white fire, it's not even red fire, there's white fire. It's so hot in some cases that it doesn't even ignite the foliage, it ignites the gases above the foliage and is like a gas fire, which is bright white. Um, there's just crazy reports, absolutely crazy reports. 2,700 houses have been destroyed so far. That is a lot of houses, you know, that's a lot of properties. And the saddest part is a lot of this is in rural communities. So a lot of these properties are farming properties. 
and it means they've lost their entire livelihood. It's not just like a house in the suburbs, you lose your house and a few belongings. This is their business. This is, you know, they might have had cattle for dairy or they might have had wheat crops or they might have had bees, you know, a lot of the beehives that produce the honey and also the bees that are needed for pollination of the fruits and vegetables in the area. So many of them have been lost. So there are so many areas that are going to be affected. Our food prices are going to go up. You know, all of these people are going to be having to rebuild their lives over an extended period of, period of time. Most of the people that had any type of uh, crops there will have to start from scratch and perhaps they won't even be able to do that. Perhaps they don't have the funds to start again. And, you know, some of these people are later on in their lives and they, they may just not have any way of supporting themselves now and having to rethink their entire future. Um, so I'm trying to appeal to my viewers um, to just even give $5, you know, like any little bit counts. And people kind of think, wow, you know, they watch the Golden Globes and they watch people like Nicole Kidman giving $500,000 or even Pink giving half a million. And there are a lot of celebrities that are reaching into their pockets, and that's amazing. But if we have hundreds of thousands, millions of the little people donating a little bit, that actually ends up being more than what any of these celebrities donate. And even though you think, oh, it's going to be covered, it won't be covered. There are so many areas that will only even show up down the line that will need help, that will need resources. Even all of the rehabilitation of the animals, you know, all of these rescued wildlife animals, they don't have homes. They, they need new plantations of eucalyptus for the, for the koalas, for example. There's all of the fencing, all of, all of the infrastructure that has been lost because of this. There is so much that needs to go into this, not just uh, for people, for general necessities like food, like clothing, um, shelter, Definitely all of those, but then for the rebuilding of the businesses and the wildlife and, and nature itself. So I'm asking you guys to donate. I'm putting the link below to be able to donate directly to the Red Cross. I've looked into various places that you can donate, and this one is a particularly easy one for international donations because literally all you do is click a button and you can put in your credit card details, or you can even pay with PayPal, which is a secure payment method and has no transaction fees internationally. So please, please, please consider donating what you can. Um, it's just something that we need to kind of look out for each other across the planet. You know, it seems like Australia is on the other side of the world and, you know, maybe if the population is so small, maybe it's something that you know, you never kind of think about Australia, but we're all part of the same world. And when disasters happen, often the best comes out in people, which is kind of sad because you kind of would hope that the best is always coming out in people in everyday life. But it's great to see these heroic stories of the firefighters or these amazing gener generosities of people donating, you know, whatever they can. Um, so let's band together and help these people that are all part of our human experience in some way. We're all interconnected. And, um, and I hope that I haven't um, kind of missed out vital information. I didn't think that I was going to get so emotional about this, but I guess it's because I spent a lot of time this morning just watching the videos and things like that. And it was um, just, yeah, putting myself in people's shoes who have lost everything and trying to think about what would I want? What human kindness would I want extended to me in that situation? So I'm asking you to do the same. I'm asking you to think about that. And please take the time to watch the rest of the footage and donate as soon as you can, whatever amount you can. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.
but it's alright. Devastating fires in Australia, killing at least 18 people, forcing tens of thousands from their homes. Now, many of those residents, as well as tourists, are seeking shelter now from those flames on beaches. Our Maggie Ruley is there for us in Australia. Good morning, Maggie. TJ, with fire danger expected to increase into the weekend today, crews were out there trying to get the upper hand. Firefighters here tell us that they were able to contain a large fire just up the road, even stopping it from jumping across a busy street. A week-long state of emergency declared this morning in parts of Australia. Thousands fleeing as more than 200 fires rage in two of Australia's most populated states, killing at least 18 people. Firefighters driving through the inferno. Shielding their windows with blankets as the flames engulf their vehicle. When we were in there, in, in the thick of it, we thought that this could be it. In the south, some families are trapped on the beach as the fires surround them on all sides. The Australian Navy is now stepping in, delivering aid to those waiting to evacuate. The wildfires are also burning through much of Australia's precious ecosystem, killing an estimated 500 million animals and threatening countless others. He's so thirsty. Like this koala found fighting for his life. Here he is here. This is Paul. Oh. He's recovering at the koala hospital and even has a name. Paul. He was the first to be rescued from these fires, but dozens followed. It's really going to set back the koalas who are already in serious decline. But it's little ones like Paul that make the researchers here keep fighting. Both researchers at the koala hospital and firefighters here tell us that they've been working in this region for decades and they have never seen anything like this. Guys. Mm. Just imagine the massive size of that. Trying to put that into scale, 12 uh -huh. million acres, they said, is bigger than the states of Connecticut and New Jersey combined. Uh -huh.